Hello and welcome, my name is Eric, and here are five tips to make you better at Banish. Number one, floating laborers. Laborers are important for clearing out iron and stone that exists on the surface, as well as moving stuff around. Nice when you can have lots of laborers to get that stuff done quickly, but even when you don't, if you find you have jobs for all these people to do, we'll end up with zero laborers. Whenever anyone dies, they end up having a position that's unfilled. It may not be obvious at first which of the positions positions you've lost. The game has no way of deciding what's more important or how people should be rebalanced. So for instance, if somebody dies and you lose your herbalist, you may not know that you lost an herbalist and then you're kind of stuck with one herbalist until you're able to figure out where it came from. And that's just annoying. But, well, and look, I think we lost a vendor there. But I, I'm not sure because I, I can't tell. The way to solve that is to keep at least one laborer at all times. Maybe have one laborer per hundred citizens or so. Whenever you, somebody dies, just your number of laborers will go down and you won't need to worry about who's filling in what position. They'll just automatically go and they'll fill in for the person who passed away. Number two, trading. The trading post is really OP, if you ask me. So one thing you can do, even if you don't have traders showing up, is you can put things in your trading inventory. And in fact, you're gonna to wanna to do that. The item I put the most of in my trading post by far is firewood, because it has fairly high value. And so you can set up yourself a woodcutter just to supply firewood to your uh, trading post. And the other thing that you can do with your trading post, even if nobody is showing up to it, is get some stuff out of your storage barns. So your storage barns, when they reach 100% like this, are kind of useless as far as your producers are concerned. So when you get more, let's say, onions as a gatherer, you have to take them somewhere. If the storage barn is full, then you got to walk to the next nearest one. Well, this one's almost full. We'll go to the next nearest one. You'd have to walk a farther distance. You become less efficient, more likely to freeze, etc. By using the trading post, we can say, well, I have a ton of, let's say, mushrooms in my storage barn. There's no real point in having them there. I can pull some out so I've boosted the efficiency of my gatherer. Just get things out of the way and they have a lot of space. So you can put quite a bit without taking that big of a dent out of your trading post capacity. So a merchant shows up on the trading tab. You'll see what they're offering. In this case, they're offering firewood at a value of four, which I obviously don't need. In this situation, indeed, anytime a merchant shows up, you have the option of ordering things. Now, because I'm in a town that has no miners and no stone cutters, I could definitely use some iron, some stone, some coal, so I can produce my steel tools and keep building, even though I don't have an unlimited supply of iron and stone on the surface. I can start purchasing coal, iron, and stone basically with just firewood, which is plentiful. Remember to change this drop down here, otherwise it won't work. Number three, fine tuning professions. You may have seen this a little bit earlier if you watched my previous video, but you can assign a smaller number to some buildings than others of the same type. Foresters are gonna go to the various forester lodges that I have on my map. I've got one here, and I have some that are quite far away over here, but I may have a limited number of workers in this other little town that I've established. So in that case, I want a bit of asymmetry, I can reduce the number of foresters that will go to this particular lodge, and that reduces this total number of desired foresters or available forester jobs, and then I can have an uneven number in different parts of my town. That, that can be beneficial to avoid having very large paths. I should be able to get local workers instead of accidentally pulling people from farther away and maybe making a much less efficient choice for them, potentially making them freeze if it's a very long distance. Number four, by default roads will form an L shape because that's the kind of thing you're gonna want when you're making roads inside a town, for instance, making plots for buildings. But maybe you just wanna make the most efficient path possible for getting people there quickly. And in that case, just hold down shift and that's an easy way to create diagonals. 
Number five, temporary stockpiles. Stockpiles are, are quite important, especially when you're building out to new areas or you're gathering resources from the surface. So for instance, if I wanted to create a new forester lodge, the first thing that has to be done to build that forester lodge is the removal of the resources on it. And it needs resources to be built. So if I place a stockpile near, it doesn't have to be very large and it's okay to remove it later. Then my laborers will come, they'll clear these trees into logs. The logs can be placed here, which is much more efficient. And then when it comes time to build, that building can be built from the same logs that were cleared because they're ready at hand with just a short distance away. It's nice to be able to put in small stockpiles and then you can always just clear them after you're done. 